Last time, we saw scientists, and not just atheist scientists, so tied to the paradigms of their discipline that their thoughts are limited and bound so that conflicting evidence is brushed aside and ignored. The Einstein paradigm is perhaps the most fiercely guarded aspect of modern physics. It's based on Einstein's denial of the ether, the universal medium filling the whole of space, which used to be a central part of science. Einstein needed to deny the ether in order to explain away the large number of experiments, culminating in Michelson and Morley's experiment, which show that the Earth is stationary at the centre of the universe. That's a prospect so horrifying to most scientists that it could not be allowed serious consideration. For a long time, physicists haven't dared to go against Einstein. They know they'll be cancelled if they do. But engineers need to know about the fabric of space for practical reasons, particularly when dealing with electromagnetic signals and flows of electricity. An electrical engineer, whom I've admired for many years, was an undergraduate at Manchester University, where I was a student a few years later. He went on to Trinity College, Cambridge, to do a PhD, looking into a problem found all over the world, anomalous loss of power in electrical systems. His research led him to the conclusion that the loss of power was due to interaction with the ether. Of course, if he'd been a physicist rather than an engineer, he'd never have dared to make such a suggestion. But he looked deeper and found it's possible not only to give energy to the ether, but to extract energy from the ether. He applied for patents on devices to extract the energy, and some were granted. His researches and publications dealing with the ether earned him recognition as a physicist as well as an engineer. Afton's work has made an impact all over the world. The establishment isn't very happy about this. They certainly don't encourage professional physicists to pursue his line of research. I introduced one of Aspton's best-known books, Physics Without Einstein, in episode 70. He wrote several other books, including Modern Ether Science, which has almost iconic status. Aspton was associated with one of my former lecturers, Eric Laithwaite. In my undergraduate days, Laithwaite was passionate about his linear induction motors. He would bring his apparatus to lectures and demonstrate to our amazement and admiration. Laithwaite's work led to maglev trains with brilliant efficiency and speeds of hundreds of kilometres an hour. He became a professor at Imperial College London and worked on anti-gravity. Aston was led to anti-gravity by his ether research at about the same time. So Aston and Laithwaite got together to compare notes and share ideas. All this was only possible because engineering has no commitment to the Einstein paradigm, even though it dominates physics with an iron fist. So research into the ether, which many have noted should be the prime focus of physics, was never shunned in engineering. Laithwaite's research became famous. It undermined the credibility of so many of the ideas dominating physics that he faced massive hostility and retired from Imperial College pretty much in disgrace. He then spent about ten years working with a fellow electrical engineer on mass transfer, a brand new thrustless propulsion system, 
and he applied for a patent on a gyroscopic space drive. NASA heard about it and sent some of their people to check out his system. They were so impressed they gave him a contract to make an electromagnetic spacecraft launcher. It was called the Mag Lifter. Sadly, he died soon after, before it could become a reality. After Aspton's brief association with Lacewaite, he continued with his research into extracting energy from the ether. There's been a lot of interest, somewhat under the radar, all over the world in ether energy. NASA decided to do a premature test while not knowing a very great deal about it. The Columbia Space Shuttle was used in an experiment to try out some of the ideas developed by Aspton and others. Columbia towed a new satellite, a $440 million satellite, with a 12.8-mile-long cable. They wanted to see if energy could be extracted. The tether blew up. The satellite was lost. All its equipment was fried, and Columbia was fortunate to survive. The remains of the tether were described as charred and melted copper, nylon and teflon. Aspen found that they were using a fairly new method. This method had been found to give up to 1,000 times more energy than usual in conditions like those in his test. He considered it rather irresponsible to do experiments which could put the people involved in severe danger while knowing so little about the method. A test was done in Russia with the aim of proving that this method would not work. It led to a one megawatt substation being blown up and a lot of equipment being destroyed. In spite of all this, the Einstein paradigm, with its denial of the ether, carries on regardless. But one never knows. This may change since a chair was established at the famous Cavendish Laboratory of Cambridge University, the Harold Aspton Chair of Fundamental Physics. If the professor occupying this position continues with research along Aspton's lines, there could be a serious possibility of Kuhn's cycle reaching the crisis stage and moving into a scientific revolution soon after. And what a revolution it would be! It might be difficult to find another excuse for ignoring the experiments which show the Earth to be stationary at the centre of the universe. And without such an excuse, it would be much harder for the atheist scientists to carry on pouring scorn on the Bible. Oh, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, Please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.